Hi, this is Tim Jones from Accelerate Computer Training in sunny Long Beach, California with another tip to help accelerate your learning and productivity. Today we're going to look at one of the mistakes Excel users commonly make using merge and center. When you want to center an entry over two or more cells like Q4 over these two cells or Q1 over the January, February, and March cells just to make it look nice, it's so easy and tempting to just click the merge and center button because Microsoft puts it right up there on the home tab. And it looks good. Q1 is now centered nicely over those three cells. Do the same over here. And here. But there's some real problems with using merge and center that, in my opinion, outweigh the benefits and the ease of use. Fortunately, there's another method that I'll show you in this video that yields the same result without any of these drawbacks. You see, when I used Merge and Center just then, the cells to the right, and this would have happened also if I had merged vertically, you can merge vertical cells like this. Let's say I just put a quick entry over here, select some cells, and use Merge and Center. And now that block of four cells has become one, just one big cell. These cells that were there lost their lives, if you will. They no longer exist in the worksheet. Likewise over here. I was in cell B4 and had highlighted across to C4 when using Merge and Center. There is actually now no cell C4 in this worksheet. So Merge and Center disrupts the normal structure of the column and row uh, grid in your worksheets. See, this is cell B4 and there is no C4. D4, likewise, has grown to uh, encompass or gobble up E4 and F4 and likewise. Now Merge and Center in Excel 2013 isn't as bad as it used to be. It doesn't prevent you from inserting columns. For example, if we wanted to insert a column here for October, it still works. And then we just need to pick this Merge cell up and move it over here. I'll drag and drop it. And oh, lo and behold, you can't do that to a Merge cell. So yet another thing that Merged cells cause problems with. So instead, we have to unmerge it, select just that cell, and then re-merge and center those three. And if we wanted to put October here, we can just use the backwards autofill. Very nice. Likewise, merge and center would not prevent you from deleting a column. Here, if I wanted to delete the June column, Q2 is merged and centered across columns or cells H4 through J4. But we can still delete column J with no problem, and the merge cell just cuts down to two cells wide instead of three. But Merge and Center still does disrupt the normal structure of columns and rows, the normal grid type structure. Watch as I select these cells going upward. As soon as I hit the merge cell, the selection expands because that merged cell doesn't have a boundary, a divider right here. And that can get annoying. Imagine if you were trying to write a formula that used merge cells in its reference. Fortunately, there's another approach that we can take. It's called Center Across Selection. I'm going to go ahead and clear away the formatting that I had applied to those cells. Center Across Selection has been around for a long time in Excel, but you may not have discovered it because it's never been as front and center as Merge and Center has been placed here in these later versions of Excel. It's not found on the ribbon. You have to dig a little bit deeper and get into the Format Cells dialog box. You can get there using this Alignment Settings button. And in the Alignment tab of Format Cells, we'll simply choose Center Across Selection. Notice that the three cells are still intact, each individually. The entry itself doesn't live here in the middle cell, even though it looks like it lives there. Notice it's blank. It lives back in the original cell, the cell where you had entered it in originally. It's just made to display centered across that range. Nice that also, as you change the width of one or more of those columns, the merge also adjusts. So it still looks perfectly centered over that range of three cells. And here's a benefit that doesn't come with merge and center that you do get with center cross selection you can actually apply it to multiple ranges at the same time. As I apply center across selection, 
Excel will look at the entries that began each of those three blocks. Said, okay, there was an entry there, let's center it across these three. There was an entry here, let's center it across those two. For center across selection to work, the entry to be centered has to be in the leftmost cell of each block, and the remaining cells have to be blank, just like with using merge and center. So again, stay away from merge and center, use center cross selection instead, and you'll find no disruption to the normal flow of your worksheets, but you get all the same benefits.